reverend fathers, venerable religious brothers and sisters, parishioners and dear guests, our thoughts are all about that first Christmas, are they not? And it brings us during the night to come and worship the newborn king. And as my thoughts go back to that original Christmas, my thoughts very much also go back to the Christmas of 200 years ago, 1818, in the little village of Oberndorf in Austria. And I do feel that personal connection with Father Joseph Moore, who, not a canonized saint, of course, but the one who I believe was divinely inspired to write the words of a Christmas carol that will be the most well-known and beloved of all time. I feel that personal connection because, well, I'm a priest too. And also I love music. I don't think I'm as good in music as Father Joseph Moore was. But I, sh <clears throat> but I definitely share that love of music. But it goes beyond this personal connection that I feel. As I said, I believe he was divinely inspired. And I think we need to realize that to explain why it has become so widely known, so beloved, and why it's so inspiring. So I would like to reflect on the lessons of this carol. And when we see the circumstances in which we are, in which it arose, we see the hallmarks, I believe, of the divine way of doing things. Where did this magnificent carol come about exactly 200 years ago? Well, I guess it was just before midnight mass that it was first heard, first performed, so, but right in, right in that area, 200 years ago. Was this carol born in, let's say, Let's take, for example, the music capital of, of Europe, Vienna. No. It was heard in this tiny, obscure village. Probably just a few thousand, maybe not even a few thousand, but a few hundred people. And that reminds us that so often God works in a way that we don't expect. God's ways are not our ways. And after all, the Savior of the world, did he come in a magnificent palace as everyone would have expected him to come? No, he came in an obscure location, in a stable in Bethlehem. Father Joseph Moore was recently ordained. He was ordained in 1815. He was 23 years old. And his health wasn't very good. He wasn't able to take on full-time assignments. So the assignments that he was given were, were assistant here or small enough where, you know, his health wouldn't be too greatly affected. Well... One of these little places was Oberndorf. But this was a genuine priest. He wrote the words of Silent Night, and you know who he loved to share it with? He loved to share it with sick children especially. And remember, 200 years ago, many more children were dying than, than could be saved. Nowadays, modern medicine can do incredible things and does incredible things, but that back then, many children didn't make it. So here's a dedicated young priest who 
goes out of his way to comfort them, to minister to them, give them the sacraments, and share these beautiful words. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, alles schläft, einsam wacht. What a comfort and a joy to these children who so much needed it. Later on, Father Joseph Moore would be known for his charity, for the efforts that he made to educate children. He established a school with endowment out of meager resources to make sure that children would be educated. He sacrificed for them. And the biographies tell us that he shared his meager priestly salary with the poor. He didn't just hold it to himself. He made sure that they could share in it. So what happened on Christmas Eve, most of us know the story already, but he had just seen a Christmas play the night before, and it just got his mind thinking, we need music for this. And so Christmas Day, he's going to tramping through the snow to the neighboring village where Franz Gruber is, the organist, the, music, the school teacher, and who also has, is, is gifted in music. He's already the organist for Father Moore's church, St. Nicholas, but he's, he goes over it that day. And sure enough, Franz Gruber also, I believe, is inspired to give us that wonderful, simple melody. It's probably three or four chords. It's got this melody that just takes you and communicates, I believe, the essence of Christmas. This Christmas carol was nearly lost. Father Moore was reassigned a year or two later to another place. And were it not for circumstances arranged by divine providence, maybe it would have just stayed there. But fortunately, it got out to the rest of the world. How powerful was this beautiful carol? It was so powerful that not even a hundred years after it was composed that during the Christmas truce of the first Christmas during that awful world war that broke out, World War I, that the enemies that were shooting one another the day before got together in no man's land to sing Silent Night. Unheard of in the history of the world. The Germans singing it in the original German. The French singing it in French. Yes, they got into a lot of trouble for fraternizing with the enemy. But for one moment, peace came to that war-ravaged land. And in no small measure, because of silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Just those words, don't they preach to us a lot? The value of silence? After all, God came during the night to teach us the value of silence. And one thing we have to deplore is that silence has been lost in the churches. Go to your average church in different parts or wherever. There's all kinds of talking going on. And when silence disappears, I believe holiness also starts to follow in disappearing. Why is that? Because we need silence to communicate with our God. And he came during a silent time. Let's not let silence suffer in our own church. Sometimes 
Maybe that needless whisper can be taken care of outside. This is such a holy place. We want to keep it holy. And if we keep it silent, it will indeed help to listen to God better. So these words, the melody, this was a gift. And thankfully we have this gift every year through this holy Christmas season to make use of. And remember the words here that we yearn to have a reality so much. Sleep in heavenly peace. What's going on in the world today? What's going on in our own country? Such discord. And of course, the answer is always because we have turned away from the Prince of Peace. That was prophecy that he came to fulfill. He will bring peace to those who seek him, those who love him, those who realize that they are loved by him more than they will ever know. So on this Christmas night, I wish you peace. I wish peace for our land. I wish peace for our country. But as I do so, I pray that people will truly believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and make that act of faith in his message. As our holy traditional Catholic faith teaches us, it has faithfully transmitted Christ's teachings to us. So we will have that peace if we turned to Christ. Turn to his mother. She's there in this, in this beautiful carol, round yon virgin and child. You can't have Christmas without Mary, can you? So she's there as a most important part by God's design. The virgin mother. So I wish you all the graces, all the inspiration of this beautiful carol that we were given 200 years ago. And it will help us to understand ever more deeply what happened over 2,000 years ago when God became man and dwelt amongst us and came to redeem us, to, to help us to get to heaven one day. God bless you and a Merry Christmas to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.